the Mutazili scientist and philosopher Al Jahiz, c. 776-869, was the first of the Muslim biologists and philosophers to develop an early theory of evolution. He speculated on the influence of the environment on animals, considered the effects of the environment on the likelihood of an animal to survive, and first described the struggle for existence a precursor to natural selection. al ideas on the struggle for existence in the Book of Animals have been summarized as follows. Animals engage in a struggle for existence, for resources, to avoid being eaten and to breed. Environmental factors influence organisms to develop new characteristics to ensure survival, thus transforming into new species. Animals that survive to breed can pass on their successful characteristics to offspring. In Chapter 47 of his India, entitled On Vasudeva and the Wars of the Bharata, Abhiraya and Bairuni attempted to give a naturalistic explanation as to why the struggles described in the Mahabharata had to take place. He explains it using natural processes that include biological ideas related to evolution which has led several scholars to compare his ideas to Darwinism and natural selection. This is due to Biruni describing the idea of artificial selection and then applying it to nature. The agriculturist selects his corn, letting grow as much as he requires, and tearing out the remainder. The forester leaves those branches which he perceives to be excellent, whilst he cuts away all others. The bees kill those of their kind who only eat, but do not work in their beehive. Nature proceeds in a similar way, however, it does not distinguish for its action is under all circumstances one and the same. It allows the leaves and fruit of the trees to perish, thus preventing them from realizing that result which they are intended to produce in the economy of nature. It removes them so as to make room for others. In the 13th century, Nazir al-Din al-Tusi explains how the elements evolved into minerals, then plants, then animals and then humans. Tusi then goes on to explain how hereditary variability was an important factor for biological evolution of living things. The organisms that can gain the new features faster are more variable. As a result, they gain advantages over other creatures. The bodies are changing as a result of the internal and external interactions. Tusi discusses how organisms are able to adapt to their environments. Look at the world of animals and birds. They have all that is necessary for defense, protection and daily life, including strengths, courage and appropriate tools, organs. Some of these organs are real weapons, for example, horn spear, teeth and claws knife and needle, feet and hoofs cudgel. The thorns and needles of some animals are similar to arrows. Dot, animals that have no other means of defense, as the gazelle and fox protect themselves with the help of flight and cunning. Dot, some of them, for example, bees, ants and some bird species, have united in communities in order to protect themselves and help each other. Tusi then explains how humans evolved from advanced animals. Such humans, probably anthropoid apes, live in the western Sudan and other distant corners of the world. They are close to animals by their habits, deeds and behavior. Dot, the human has features that distinguish him from other creatures, but he has other features that unite him with the animal world, vegetable kingdom or even with the inanimate bodies. Transmutation of Species Aldinawari, 828-896, considered the founder of Arabic botany for his book of plants, discussed plant evolution from its birth to its death describing the phases of plant growth and the production of flowers and fruit. Ibn Miskaway Salfors Alaskar and the Brethren of Purity's Encyclopedia of the Brethren of Purity, the Epistles of Iqwan al-Safa, developed theories on evolution that possibly had an influence on Charles Darwin and his inception of Darwinism, but has at one time been criticized as over-enthusiastic. These books state that God first created matter and invested it with energy for development. Matter, therefore, adopted the form of vapor which assumed the shape of water in due time. The next stage of development was mineral life. Different kinds of stones developed in course of time. Their highest form being merjan, 
coral. It is a stone which has in it branches like those of a tree. After mineral life evolves vegetation, the evolution of vegetation culminates with a tree which bears the qualities of an animal. This is the date palm. It has male and female genders. It does not wither if all its branches are chopped but it dies when the head is cut off. The date palm is therefore considered the highest among the trees and resembles the lowest among animals. Then is born the lowest of animals. It evolves into an ape. This is not the statement of Darwin. This is what Ibn Maskaway states and this is precisely what is written in the epistles of Iqwan el Safa. The Muslim thinkers state that ape then evolved into a lower kind of a barbarian man. He then became a superior human being. Man becomes a saint, a prophet. He evolves into a higher stage and becomes an angel. The one higher to angels is indeed none but God. Everything begins from him and everything returns to him. English translations of the Encyclopedia of the Brethren of Purity were available from 1812 while Arabic manuscripts of the al fawz al Asghar and the epistles of Iqwan al safa were also available at the University of Cambridge by the 19th century. These works likely had an influence on 19th century evolutionists, and possibly Charles Darwin. In the 14th century, Ibn Khaldun further developed the evolutionary ideas found in the Encyclopedia of the Brethren of Purity. The following statements from his 1377 work. The Mukadima express evolutionary ideas. We explained that, that the whole of existence in all its simple and composite worlds is arranged in a natural order of ascent and descent, so that everything constitutes an uninterrupted continuum. The essences at the end of each particular stage of the worlds are by nature prepared to be transformed into the essence adjacent to them, either above or below them. This is the case with the simple material elements. It is the case with palms and vines, which constitute the last stage of plants, in their relation to snails and shellfish, which constitute their lowest stage of animals. It is also the case with monkeys, creatures combining in themselves cleverness and perception, in their relation to man, the being who has the ability to think and to reflect. The preparedness for transformation that exists on either side, at each stage of the world's is meant when, we speak about, their connection. Plants do not have the same fineness and power that animals have. Therefore, the sages rarely turn to them. Animals are the last and final stage of the three permutations. Minerals turn into plants, and plants into animals. But animals cannot turn into anything finer than themselves. Numerous other Islamic scholars and scientists, including the polymath Ibn al haytham and Al-Ghazini, discussed and developed these ideas. Translated into Latin, these works began to appear in the West after the Renaissance and may have had an impact on Western philosophy and science.